a heated confrontation unfolded between Hasanabi and Emily Austin during their appearance on Piers Morgan's show, spiraling into allegations of terrorism. Piker and Austin fiercely debated their contrasting perspectives on Israel's actions, with Piker branding Austin as a terrorist, and Austin firing back with the same accusation. The discourse grew increasingly tumultuous, prompting Morgan's futile attempts to mediate, thus underscoring the formidable hurdles of addressing contentious subjects in the realm of live television. Don't miss, what were the main points of contention in the debate between Hasanabi and Emily Austin? How did crackhead Barney's confrontation with Alec Baldwin unfold? And what were the underlying issues? It seems like you're dancing around whether you think October the Here's, 7th was justified or not. Why are we doing not? this? Why are we doing this back and forth masturbation? I've already given you yes, my Pierce, fucking position. Why are you doing this? I'm sick happy. and tired it's of Jews repeating Jews it over and over again. I've already given you my fucking position. I'm sick and tired of repeating it over and over again. The passage encapsulates the weariness and exasperation born of reiterating one's stance repeatedly, hinting at a yearning for comprehension and acknowledgement of one's viewpoint, sans the need for incessant repetition. Okay, because I just asked this. Okay. Ask this. Emily, Even stop next to me. Where are you? Fucking idea of dog tag. Only when it's Jews, if, it's okay. Please stop talking next to me. Wearing an idea of dog tag. If she actually thinks Israel's no, actions are justifiable. Bring them home. Do you it's see to bring me? The hostages Rocking the fucking. Home. The hostages. The, all right, you it's talking about each other. All right, you know what it is. No, bring the home. It's to bring the hostages home. The hostages that you rightly believe are wrong. Wrong is Gaza. In highlighting the critical need to bring hostages back home and underscoring the gravity of the situation in Gaza, it's a heartfelt plea for empathy towards all those impacted by conflict and captivity. I'm going to give you two, I'm going to let you two calm down. It's pointless. We cannot hear you when you talk over each other. Every time recently I have someone from both sides on, like it goes like this. I'm wearing this rusty necklace. Please, can you listen to me, Emily? Civilians yeah, 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 yeah. in Gaza right. right now. Can you stop hostages? doing this to each hey, other, please? Emily, nobody Emily, can, nobody Emily, can understand can a word either of you saying. But please, can you listen to me, Emily? Can you stop doing this to each other, please? Nobody can understand a word either of you are saying. In the quest for civility and attentive discourse, it is imperative to foster mutual respect and empathy amidst contrasting perspectives. Recognizing the challenges inherent in meaningful dialogue during contentious debates is crucial. And let me come to Esther and James here. This is one of my problems. No, I want to hear if Emily condemns no, the no, actions Hassan, of Israel. No, no, you will please let me moderate that? the debate. Why don't you ask for about 3,000 people? Idea. I've got two I pandas here who have not had a word exactly. yet. I've got two pandas here who have not had a word yet. Engaging in metaphonic expression humorously shines a spotlight on those yet to engage in the discourse subtly suggesting the importance of inclusive participation and respect for all perspectives. It's a charming plea for fairness, urging equal consideration for every voice present. Because you're a they fucking terrorist. Please stop talking. Homes. I don't think you're a terrorist. Emily. In a fiery interview, Piers Morgan engages with crackhead Barney, who confronted Alec Baldwin regarding Palestine. Crackhead Barney persistently implores Morgan to vocalize solidarity with Palestine, sparking a tense exchange. After some resistance, Morgan relents, affirming his stance on Palestine's right to freedom. However, the dialogue takes an unexpected twist as Crackhead Barney recounts personal encounters with racial injustice, diverting attention from the initial subject matter. Pierce! Fucking Morgan! You're asking too Just for the record, questions. my name is actually just Piers What's Morgan. What's wrong with saying free Palestine? Piers, can you say free, free, free Palestine for me? I think Pierce, can you say free Palestine for if me? If you stop shouting, yeah. I, I want you to say it. Yes, I'm happy okay. to say it. Okay, I'm yeah. not going to shout. If you just, Mr. Piers Morgan, If you just keep quiet, I can answer your question. Mr. Piers Morgan, please say free Palestine. This statement reflects a yearning for acknowledgement and solidarity with the Palestinian plight, appealing to our innate sense of empathy. Jim, yes, I'm very happy to I'm say that- I'm never quiet, Pierce. Sorry, you're still talking. I'm never quiet. Okay, but try I'm never Otherwise quiet, I can't. Pierce. I cannot You ask me to up. do something. If you don't shut up, I can't give you the answer. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll shut up for you. I I'll shut up for you. In the realm of collaboration, there exists a profound readiness to embrace cooperation, underscored by a sincere appeal to foster mutual comprehension and seek paths of compromise. Absolutely <laughs> believe that Palestine yes. should be free, yes. Oh, okay. And how are we going to do that, Pierce? Give us the answers, Pierce Morgan! Give us the fucking answers! Okay. How are we going to make Palestine free?
Yeah, if it was as simple How as are me... How are going to do it? If it was as simple as me just giving a simple answer now, it would have been done by now. It's a very complicated issue. But let me and, ask you again, why... And, did, why let me ask you yes. again, seriously, why did you do what you did to Alec Baldwin and what did you hope to achieve? Alec Baldwin! <laughs> Look at me! Pierce, honestly! Look at me, Pierce, honestly. Engaging with pleas for attention and acknowledgement is vital to empathize, actively listen to, and grasp the speaker's circumstances. Pierce, look at my body! Look at this! Look at me! Pierce, I was maimed by a white man! I was maimed by a white man. Revealing personal trauma sparks empathy, forging a connection to the speaker's anguish and the injustice endured, an essential catalyst for tackling systemic issues head-on. Listen, I understand, I understand you're a performative artist. I understand you're a performative artist. Acknowledging someone's work fosters empathy towards their viewpoints and goals, appreciating the significance of their imaginative output. I understand you're, you're trying to make everybody laugh. You're you've, you've made, you've made your afraid. joke about your terrible so maiming. Satellite, you're lashing me. Right, OK, I'm not lashing I you. I was beaten. Uh, this is the third... This wanna... is the third white man to beat me this week. Right. Third okay. white man. Yesterday, my white boyfriend beat the shit out of me. Yesterday, my white boyfriend beat the shit out of me. Revealing instances of abuse not only stirs empathy, igniting a deep understanding of pain and vulnerability, but also plays a pivotal role in addressing the pervasive issue of violence and offering steadfast support to its victims. This is the third white man. Monday was Alec. The second day was another white man. Third day, Pierce Morgan is beating me up mm. on international TV! In the fiery clash between Hasanabi and Emily Austin featured on Piers Morgan's show, we witnessed the simmering tensions encapsulating the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Piker's bold accusations branding Austin as a supporter of terrorism and her staunch defense of Israel's actions serve as stark reminders of the divisive nature of this issue. Amid Morgan's attempts to steer the conversation, chaos ensues, laying bare the complexities of finding middle ground on such deeply entrenched matters. This heated exchange not only underscores the challenges of maintaining civil discourse in today's media landscape, but also magnifies the gaping chasm between conflicting perspectives. Despite the tumultuous nature of the dialogue, it underscores the imperative of fostering constructive conversations to navigate through the intricate web of geopolitical intricacies. In the realm of values, there exists a dichotomy between tradition and individuality. Traditional values, exemplified by reverence for authority and adherence to societal norms, are often upheld. Take, for instance, the contentious debate featuring Hasanabi, Emily Austin, and Piers Morgan. Some perceive it as a lamentable breakdown in civil discourse and deference to authority. Conversely, crackhead Barney's antics are viewed as crude and disruptive, yet amidst this clash of ideals lies the assertion of personal freedom and authenticity. Passionate debates and unfiltered expressions are heralded as the assertion of one's convictions and a reflection of societal norms and personal identity. Hasanabi and Emily Austin's demeanor, though labeled as confrontational, are seen as manifestations of this authenticity. However, the use of profanity and insults is critiqued as lacking in civility and decorum, much like crackhead Barney's attention-seeking behavior, which impedes meaningful dialogue. Delving deeper, it becomes apparent that understanding lies in deciphering the motivations and authenticity of each participant. The scrutiny extends to crackhead Barney's need for recognition, juxtaposed against Hasanabi and Emily Austin's fervent expressions of belief. The dynamics of interaction, both among participants and with the audience, warrant investigation from various angles. Emotional ramifications, such as stress and frustration stemming from heated exchanges, merit examination, as does the potential harm inflicted by public shaming and ridicule. In essence, the actions of participants serve as a reflection of their quest for meaning and authenticity amid societal expectations and critique. Contemplation is warranted regarding how Hasanabi, Emily Austin, and crackhead Barney navigate social norms while asserting their individuality in the face of scrutiny and judgment. What do you think?